Oh, hi. This is Nick Hembers. I'm going to ask Christopher Walwath some questions. <laughs> Wal That's not my name. Walrath. Here you go. Walwath. How have I known you? Uh, let's switch over. Okay, that's not right. How do I switch over? Fuck! So it was the coldest fucking day of the year, right? Like, the fucking clouds were dark up there, like, there was fucking something evil brewing. So we were driving up to fucking Mount Lemmon, there's no still for days. We get up to the very top, apparently there's some shitty shenanigans where you can't fucking film on, the, film on a ski lift, you know, because there's snow. So everyone says that we should go back down three miles to yeah. where there was more snow, that's what everyone seems to think. Well, just, given that, that we'd probably all die if we try to go down a film, <laughs> um, then we might not but get back up. Either. Yeah. What's that up there, though? Oh, we That's, just meet. Me and Chris just jogged a mile up there. Let's talk for a second about that bitch at the uh, at the uh, ski lift, where she's giving us this rap about no, you can't walk on that snow because then then uh, you know. Uh, people aren't going to be able to ski on it or some shit. She's like, well, if you want to be able to ski, Peter's like, I don't want to ski. And she's like, then you need to leave. It's like, wow, that's real nice attitude. So uh, I, I blame her, honestly, like directly for us getting stuck in the snow. And, um, you know, it's a bad scene. Um, so we finally, we finally get to the spot where we get some snow coming down. Then on the way back down the mountain, Charles mentioned that he had a friend that had a cabin. So we're going to go there and try to film because he thought that there was a little more snow there. Uh, Kevin apparently didn't get the memo that you had to have four-wheel drive and he tried to make it down the mountain and ended up getting stuck. This is the glamour of filmmaking right here. By the way, we haven't filmed. Yeah, we haven't filmed a single fucking, fucking scene. scene. Anybody who, who says like, I want to be in one of Peter's movies, this is what happens. This is, this is, this is the glamour of being in these movies. My buddy David, his grandparents have a cabin up there they've had for a while. And as I prefaced everybody, yeah. There's probably snow down there, but you really need four-wheel drive to drive down there. Even when there's not snow. Now well, there happened to be a dick load of snow. So Kevin, maybe we'll cut to some footage of us pushing the truck out of there. Kevin, who has a pre-runner, which let me explain to you that, it's not a four-wheel drive truck. Basically everything without a four-wheel drive. Follows down, gets stuck. We spent probably about, what, like an hour, hour and a half? If not even just two hours. It felt like a fucking eternity. Like, it was Sisyphus pushing the fucking boulder up the hill is what it was. If I was to comment anything about that scenario was just how first excited I was that we are potentially going to find a cool spot by Charles' friend's cabin. And then just how everything just hit at once and it was like a blizzard, the fastest blizzard I've ever seen. Oh, that hurts. Oh, don't get that. <laughs> All right, we ready for blood now? Yeah, let's do this. All right. Um, I kind of felt like a dick because we had uh, uh, Jamie and uh, Charles out in like one-piece jumpsuits, and then Chris had like half a shirt on, which is good for the ladies, but you know, not so good when you're when you're on a frozen mountain. Um, yeah, well, frozen planet. Yeah. Funny, the beginning of this day, our issue is not having enough snow. No. <laughs> that looked pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> Was it supposed to fall? No. no. There's also a really goofy snowman in the background that I kept going, hey, do we really want to have a snow a snowman in the background of this big climactic action scene? And, uh, you know, Peter slapped me across the face and told me to shut the fuck up. So I was like, all right, I guess that's what I'll do. So I really just want to play with that. So you're just doing a video camera? Yeah, you, you can come in here if you want. I'd like to try it. I'll, I'll
we're, we're you guys want to yeah. ask him some questions? He, he just, he's the director, so. Yeah, yeah. Come in for him and ask me some questions can about I, making a movie. Is it okay if I try that thing? Well, you're, we're, we're filming like an interview for behind the scenes of a movie. Can we try? Can I try to do it? Can well, I try to? It's filming. There's, re, there's really nothing to do. You just push a button. Can you, push you, can, button? you can ask me some questions if you want about okay. filming movies. Okay, but it takes a lot of work. Uh, it actually doesn't take as much work as you would think. Yeah, I really feel bad for Charles. He ended up laying in the script. It's after his character gets shot. He's laying face down in the snow. And in the script, it's you know, it's Go about back, five seconds of screen time. But in classic movie making fashion, it ended up taking us a solid like 30 minutes. And for some reason, I don't think I'll ever know why. When we weren't filming, Charles opted to continue to lay face down in the snow as opposed to stand up. So all right, all right, that was interesting, go but start, go the end result was that he ended up laying face down in the snow for a solid 30 minutes. So we showed up at, uh, at, at Cavern Studios in Tucson for green screen, and um, I was like, this place is fucking great. It had air conditioning, it had a working toilet. <laughs> Madness. Sir, I have two of these, uh, two, like another two white shirts I can wear oh, the other. I think, That's gonna take much time. I think we're gonna do what you said where you get stabbed and then like the first one like you're holding it Yeah, and then well, you get stabbed out of frame like three more times and the that's thing that, when the thing that they cut back to it. You know, it's pretty good. We're doing a lot of green screen stuff So I think you'll see that looks pretty good in the movie. You know, there's a scene where uh, um, Yeah, I'm showing off my natural manhood and it might be a little big so I don't feel too intimidated It's just how it is. I don't mean to brag, but you know a lot of these movies, I'm doing something pretty crude sexually, so you're just gonna have to probably accept that. The world, <laughs> the world's but fluffiest if, bush. If we did it with Charles, that's really bad. <laughs> Is that a tumor on your penis, or are you just happy I, I, to see us? <laughs> try to take that bottle out. And that one, I think that right. That looks better, right, Jimmy? What do you think? That looks better, right? I think. <laughs> yeah. This is fairly standard. And you also got three minors on the way to Winwood. Thank you, Daniel. I was getting to that. I was just making sure. Why don't you make sure you have your ass back in your seat in 30 seconds? Well, we're going to try it again. Um, instead of saying, have your ass back in your seat, why don't you be like, why don't you sit your ass down? Where did you get all the fucking knives? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. All right, now turn around to your left. To your left. To your left. Walk away. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Cut. Children, I'm gonna be your new daddy now. <laughs> We're really crossing our fingers about Laurel Canyon. We only had two days to get into the Laurel Canyon soundstage up in California. So... We had to schedule two days worth, pretty much filming the entire movie in two days. Uh, Chris, what was the fa your favorite part about filming Heavy Nova? Favorite part about Heavy Nova? I think going to the sound stage and being in LA, fantastic. I feel like a superstar. We got to the studio, man, and uh, you know it was all uh, all wired up, and we finally got in, and it looked pretty legit. You know, it's definitely a bump up from some of the other stuff we've done. It's pretty. Pretty huge set, a lot of stuff, a lot of green screen sets. Seemed like it was kind of a big deal. And uh, yeah, I think uh, walking in, we were all kind of in awe, you know? My first impression of Royal Canyon's stage was, I cannot believe Peter paid 8,000 for this shit. Then we walked into the place after spending uh, a bunch of money from our Kickstarter. And it, my first impression was, this looks like, you know, a really bad like amusement park made of balsa wood. Cause it's like, you go back, you go in there and there's like all these things that are wooden and it just doesn't look very much like a space thing. But once you actually start walking around the space sets, uh, then it's like, wow, this is we're on a real movie set. This is great. This is really fucking cool. Tour of the sound stage. I, I've, I've made an executive area. decision to not take my activity out until later in the day. That's a good resting area. <laughs> Here's the space toilet. Mm. Here, come on up over here, Chris. This is the med bay. Okay. This is what the med bay is. This is the med bay. This is a random alien esque corridor. And action. Alright, boys. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that looked like he was still smiling. My dick is average size, okay? Does that make you happy? Well, it's average. I don't understand how you got the girl pregnant then. Well, because it's not about the size of my dick. It's about the girth of my balls, baby. That's such bullshit. Communications are down, motherfuckers. What? Well, where the hell is Rasputin on? I have no idea. That's all not my problem. Well, can you tell us why communications are down? Because I don't see shit here. Probably better ask Rasputin on, huh? Uh, we just asked you, huh? And I told you to fuck yourself. Okay. All right, well, the captain and Rasputin up. We're in the hologram room together. I'll go check that out. Hey, I take the helm. Oh, hey there. Nick Fimbers here. Again. Hey, uh, Chris. What makes Peter Leon such a good filmmaker and most importantly, a friend? <laughs> Max Bett. Max Bett. Oh, hey, hey there. This is Max Bett on the machine. Uh, Peter Leon is a good guy. He's very raging, but he's a loyal friend and a great buddy. Whatever we're gonna do, we gotta do it now. Right now, this second. Go back over there, we gotta film. Peter was kind of flying through shots. He, he was like, that's a good shot. Yeah, he did like Jack Daniels, vodka. He was, if, if he was drinking, he would have been hammered at that point for how many shots he was flying through. I guess he's like Pete style is, uh, you know, we're pretty much gonna go in there. Everybody should kind of know what they're doing, but we usually don't because we're not very good actors. Yeah, no big deal, but let's do our thing. We'll try and get it in the take or two. Uh, some like eight hours to get our stuff done, and I thought there was no way in hell that we were going to get all of it done because uh, things usually go wrong, but we actually got done with it right away, so it was a really good day. I think it probably was mostly because Peter did not want to do second takes of anything. So we had to schedule two days. We're pretty much filming the entire movie in two days, so it was pretty frantic. Some people might say that I... Uh, I didn't give enough time for the actors to perfect their scenes, but I would say I don't care. So Jamie, I don't know if you guys know, I mean, we have a weird uh, rivalry friendship, you know, where, um, you know, sometimes we'll wrestle without our shirts. It's, it's not a problem, but I mean, he's a good actor, so it seems like it worked out pretty well. You know, Patrick co-wrote the script with me. He just did a phenomenal job. He really knew where all the characters were supposed to be and, and really helped the flow of each scene. Charles is an interesting kind of character to work with, you know, I mean, he was really cool when we did, uh, uh, you know, Copper Creek, really grateful to be in, included in the first place. Now, you don't even get to talk to him because of his entourage that he has around him all the time. It's like, I, I actually had my jaw broken trying to just ask him, um, you know, what he was going to do for dinner that night. I, I didn't realize, you know. So, uh, Nick, uh, I don't know if all you guys know this, but he's from England. You know, England, Tucson. It's a neighborhood here. So he's just doing his natural accent. You know, he's half uh, half Asian, half Mexican, half uh, half English. So, bro, bro, you need a doctor, bro. Nailed it. <laughs> you know, Zach. Not only is he a great actor, but he's great at securing tarps. Um, it's kind of an inside joke now, but every time we took off in Kevin's truck, Zach was obsessed with the tarp that was securing the the load in the back of the truck. You know, Kevin had his mustache, which. You know, he called Reginald, but his real name was, uh, what was his mustache? Durango. 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 Durango was his real name. I think because he always wanted a Durango truck, which probably would have had four-wheel drive. And if he had had that, he wouldn't have got stuck on the mountain. But, you know, Kevin had a lot of problems slipping on a piece of pizza. It seemed like it worked out okay in the end. Uh, he kept trying to really slip on the piece of pizza, and I think that comes from his Marx Brothers training. Daniel stepped in at the last minute. Originally, Jeff was supposed to be filming in California with us, but he ended up not being able to make it out to California for, for financial reasons, so Daniel stepped in with very short notice <clears throat> and just knocked it out of the park. He did a phenomenal job. Uh, Chris, uh, you know, Chris is a Marine and he didn't wear a shirt a lot, even when we weren't shooting, so that was kind of weird. You know, and uh, you know, we asked him to put his shirt on a lot and he just, he wouldn't put it on. And, you know, it got a little awkward the last day and we had to put it on for him, but, you know, he's a pretty good character actor, pretty solid. And, uh, I mean, he was in the Marines or something. I'd say me and Vince were pretty much the only two people that were on our feet the entire two days of filming. As tired as I was, I looked over at Vince and he was right there with me doing everything. So, you know, the majority of the cast and crew I'd look over and they were jerking each other off, playing bike race and whatnot. But uh, Vince was right by my side the entire time. Bike race? Look what happened. <laughs> So and then at the end of the at the end of filming, you know, everything wrapped up nicely and we got a good night's sleep there and we were packing up to go home and 
we're giving everybody the handshakes and hugs goodbye. And uh, Jamie decided that he was not only going to hug me, but he was going to lift me up to show his uh, strength. And I told him, I was like, I don't know if you should do that or not. And he was like, Peter, trust me, I can lift you up. So he tried to lift me up and I immediately heard a pop and he just uh, keeled over to the ground. Um, and at first everyone, everyone thought that he was joking, but in the back of my mind, I was like, I don't think he's joking. Like I heard it, I was right next to him when I heard that pop. And so I looked down and he, he was still on the ground, but he, he told us to call 911 and we called 911. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. They rushed him off via ambulance to some random hospital in California. I had no idea where we were. It turned out to be like right up the road. It was right up the road, but it also may have been the shittiest hospital I've ever seen. The waiting room was literally outside. But. Nelson Mariona, registration window F. Nelson Mariona, Ventana FF. But if we, if we all go in. Can you, can you transport him out here? I think so. <laughs> Jamie, why'd you try to pick up Pete? Because I wanted to prove that I was a badass like Chris Walrath. So it's Chris's fault? Yeah, entirely. It's entirely Chris's fault. Chris Ann Kramer, 3167. Chris Ann Kramer, 3167, please. They've just given him some morphine for pain. Is it helping, Jamie? Mm -mm. No? They just did the C-spine. Doctor did not find anything. Listen, if I die, can we just make the heavy Nova premiere my, Your my, funeral? my funeral? Yes, but you're not going to die, so don't say that anymore. Yeah, well, I was a little concerned when it first happened. Like when I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. I never got to see Paris. Well, mm -hmm. lesson learned. Everything's going to be okay. Okay, so... Okay, so, uh, Any last words before I turn this off? Cheese in Mexico. What? What? I thought they were, were trying to say kiss a boy or something. I should say that. Jimmy, any last words before I turn this off? What go, do you want? Go kiss a boy. <laughs>